Okay. That may be worse than we think. New project in the shop today. 5.9 Cummins engine. Straight out of Travis's junkyard. So I'm building this for Travis. This is for a square body dually he's putting together. This is an old raced out motor. It's got head studs in it. Missing a lot of parts. Kind of been parted and yarded. Aluminum tape over everything. I don't know what to expect, but we're going to tear into this thing. We're going to check the timing to see how it was timed. We're going to put a side cover gasket in it. And if the oil and everything looks good in it, we're going to uh, probably fire it up. See if it's any good. Make sure it's got oil pressure. Um, we're going to get this transmission off of there. And then uh, I think he's going to put a six-speed manual on it be kind of cool so let's get started So we got the transmission off. I pulled the valve covers off and the fuel lines. I'm going to uh, start by adjusting the valves and then I'm going to check the timing. Put the uh, timing tools on it. We'll actually roll it up and check the timing and see where the timing sat. That'll kind of give me an indication of how radical the motor is or how they had it set up. Um, so I blew through all the injector lines. Everything is clean and clear there. And then uh, we'll get uh, we'll get a starter on it and crank it over a little bit and uh, see if we can uh, get compression out of it. Alrighty, so we've got the uh, number one barrel out, the delivery valve. So what the delivery valve does is retains PSI in this line between here and the injector because if that line bleeds down, then it wastes pump travel to recharge that line. So it maintains a minimum of about 600 to uh, 800 PSI. So if you look down in this pump, you can see the top of the piston. That's the piece that's got a slot cut in it. Okay. Now what you're going to see when I hit the throttle is you're going to see that twist. Okay. That, that is your piston and then the outside of that is the barrel. Now because this has two notches in the outside of the piston, this means it has spill port timing. Essentially inside the barrel there's a groove and when that rotates it picks up more fuel to fill the plunger to create higher uh, fuel volume delivery. So every time you step on the throttle it fills that you know more full. That's that's why you know cranking the rack on these will actually turn the fuel up because you get more fuel in the barrels and it delivers more to the injector. But what we're going to do, we're going to put this tool in here, and uh, there'll be a dial indicator going here, we're going to check the timing. So, I'll uh, roll my card over here so that we can uh, get a halfway decent video of this. We'll check the timing and see where it's at. So, because this pump has two marks, two notches on the plunger. It automatically tells me that it's a 215 horsepower um, 
basically 12 millimeter pump. So you can see the, the diameter of the, the piston. So the diameter of the piston of the barrel is 12 millimeter and that's, that's uh, you can measure that too if you want. So essentially here we're going to put this uh, dial indicator in and we will set it at zero. And there we go. Everything is locked in place. And I don't know if this is going to work very good or not. Actually, I think I'll just move my other camera. So I'm going to turn this one off and move my other camera. pin for the motor. So the pin is locked at top dead center number one and we are six point yeah, basically six six millimeter six point three five millimeter. So we're going to come over here we're going to look at our chart. I have tons of good charts for this. This is uh, one of many Looks like I'm missing one, and I don't know where it went, but uh, this one's not going to go high enough. So it's, it's looking like it's probably around 20 to 21 degrees, which is good. It should spool quick and uh, actually run well. So I think we'll leave the timing right there and uh, start it up All and right. see how it runs. I don't know if we got sound or not. We'll hope we got sound. Got Brad here. He's going to help uh, witness this disaster as we have this motor bouncing around on the floor. We've got an oil pressure gauge. Let me check oil pressure. We finally got a turbo on it. We got all fuel lines ready. We're ready to start bleeding the system. And uh, maybe it will start. So we'll set you guys up here. We have another disaster camera on the other side. Does actually have a hole. Mm -hmm. This is that old uh, old rotten fuel hose. Maybe that won't work. Because it goes glick, 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 glick all the way back to the tank. We'll give it a try. Almost got it there. Uh, we clean up some results. This one, I That one, I know. Yeah. Well, that got faster. That got faster, huh? That's not good. How about that? That's off. Or it's empty. There we go. We're getting there. It's going to leak there too a little. That'll be alright. We can get it to run. Good thing diesel fuel is not flammable. Okay. That may be worse than we think. That one's kind of stuck there. I don't know why there's so much air in that, but we got air in it. Keep an eye on the oil pressure gauge, see if it comes up. Probably not going to come up until it starts. Duck 
upset, Brad. She's not liking it. Got fuel running across the floor. Might have to take a minute and weld that. Stay clear of that, it might flash. Might have to weld that fuel filter thing. She wants to go for a walk. Got one. Oh, it's gonna get rowdy when it finally starts. Yeah. Pumped out on the ground. She's pretty good. Yeah. That'll make it fun. We're catching on fire. <laughs> Rats. Rats says we're catching on fire. <laughs> Sounded pretty good. It was running on all six. Yeah, fired. Smoke cleaned up after about a nanosecond. Look, the starting fluid is not fuel. Well, it's been sitting so long, the injectors were all stuck on it. It'll start right up now. timing plug is out of it. There's a plug that goes in the front of the motor. I've got a really bad oil leak down in here. And I just noticed the timing plug that goes in that hole right there. I'll show you on this motor outside here. And then we got a fuel leak there. I gotta weld that. But uh, we'll get the timing plug out of this one and seal the hole up. plug right here has a little o-ring on it and then the, the little ring on there and that's got to go in that hole yeah this one's clean isn't it yeah. clear full of dirt <laughs> that's sand all over the end of it ah, it's overrated so what we'll do Wipe this off a little. Reach up in there and put that in the hole. And you don't want it to go in too far because it locks the, the gear and it'll just break that little plastic thing. So I'm too slow. What happens is the head of the idle screw wears off. So if you just turn it a quarter turn, the idle will be where it was factory. That's maintenance. That's what I call maintenance. Now it should start right up again. Beautiful thing right there. Beautiful thing. With diesel fuel all over it. Well, I think I can tear that apart and weld that up, fix that leak. 
put a new fuel filter in it. We'll weld that hole up. Don't need that one. Turbo sounds good. Oil pressure's good. Give it a steam clean and it can go to Travis and he can put it in his truck. And later on I'll show you guys the truck. It's pretty cool. It's square body Chevy being slammed on the ground. Easiest and cheapest way I've found stock shackles and a stock leaf spring bushing in here. This is two by two tow hitch quarter inch wall. Same as they make tow hitches out of. You kind of just curve it and then weld the leaf spring bushing to it and press the rubber in and out. Sometimes I weld it to it, don't press the rubber in and out. This is just a simple leaf spring pert that you would weld on any axle. Back here makes a stock shock mounts. I just go weld on the bar and then come up on top of the notch and weld here. Pan hard bar on the back of the bar. See, I run them like maybe four inches past the axle. And the airbags, if your frame's narrow, can go right off the side in between the wheel. If you want to run them inboard and don't have gas tanks, you can run the whole thing inboard as well. This is a uh, Jeep Cherokee front, either steering rod or pan head bar that just I made fit. Adjustable on both ends. Simple, cheap. and check out industrial injections video of me and Scott tearing down this 5.9 rusted up Cummins engine. You won't want to miss it.